स्टार्ट कीजिए मैम A pleasant good evening to one and all. It is said, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Today is the successful culmination of eight days hard work and dedication under the collaborative banner of ISPEL, that is Indian Society for the Promotion of English Language and Literature, Vidarbha Forum, and Shakespearean Society of Central India. On this valedictory program, I, Dr. Minakshi Pasnik, feel the privilege to welcome our respected learner delegates, literary aspirants, and all our distinguished participants who are who are attending this program from all the corners of the country. On behalf of Indian Society for the Promotion of English Language and Literature, Vidarbha Forum, and Shakespearean Society of Central India, I feel honored to welcome today's chief guest. Professor Dr. T. R. Murli Krishnan. On this valedictory program, I, Dr. Mina Krishnan, MES Asmabi College from Kodungalur. I find equally pride to welcome the chairperson of today's program, our mentor, guide, and philosopher, Dr. Chakravarti Madam, President, Shakespearean Society of Central India. I heartily welcome Dr. Usha Sakure Madam, Secretary, Shakespearean Society of Central India. and dr jyoti patil madam president of indian society for the promotion of english language and literature i heartily welcome to you once again i also feel immensely gratified and indeed my it is indeed my earnest duty to bid all the learned participant a graceful welcome the objective of shakespearean dramas like any other art form is to give aesthetic pleasure which is evoked through various modes of representing representation dealing with the creative use of language and technique adopted in the work of art boasting of living in the fiction of today's scientific society full of 3d animations and advanced technologies used in the digital theaters does not permit us to defile the bygone territory of shakespearean society which is endowed with globe theater because shakespearean history even today is like nature that has always been mankind's revered teacher to give us a lively experience of this shakespearean world today we have a very magnanimous personality and a very resourceful academician amongst us dr usha sakure madam it is a great pleasure to introduce to dr usha sakure madam the lady with a vision to build model education with a mission to inculcate strategic planning and team building with her magnificent leadership qualities It is proud to introduce Dr. Usha Sakura Madam who is working as an associate professor head department of english and principal at Manohara Kamri Mahavidyalaya She is the ex director of Dharampet Mahila Multi State Cooperative Bank and Devyani International School She holds the key post of secretary at Central India Institute of Education and Cultural Development a pioneer body imparting quality education in the field of rural education in central india She is in the advisory board of Green Haven Group of Institution, offering B.A. and management courses. She is the secretary of Center of for Literary Interaction and Creativity and Shakespearean Society of Central India. She has received the prestigious Bharat Jyoti Award, Savitri Bai Phule Award, and Vidarbha Bhushan Award, which shows the mark of excellence in her academic achievements. Today, Dr. Rusha Sakure Madam will share her wisdom of knowledge of the real dramatic world of Shakespeare's. which uh, she happened to be experienced from her overseas visit to united kingdom in the year 2018 i feel highly privileged and elated to invite dr usha sakure madam to share her legendary piece of recollection to our esteemed participant on the topic stratford upon avon and the globe theater over to dr usha sakure madam madam you are not audible Are uh, audible now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Minakshi, for this generous introduction. And on behalf of ISPEL, Vidar Forum, and Shakespeare Society of Central India, I take this opportunity to welcome you all to this last but concluding session. A generous good evening to all the dignitaries and dear participants. And so today uh, we have reached to the culminating day of this eight days uh, Shakespeare certificate course. 
I also hope that this course must have certainly changed you as a person. After all the heavy sessions on Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's plays, his philosophy, various aspects, which um, resulted in serious delirations, I think. Now, today, let us move towards this valedictory in a lighter mood. Uh, Shakespeare's mother once said to him, you are very weak in English, and if you fail this time, I will not allow you to continue your studies. Shakespeare did not pass MA English, but now no one can pass MA English without reading Shakespeare, such as his stature. So dear students, don't try to achieve higher degrees, but always try to achieve higher education. This is the message that Shakespeare the Bard has given us all, and still he continues to shape our lives even today. Shakespeare intrigued everyone. I remain no exception. So friends, I visited uh, United Kingdom in the year 2018, and I couldn't resist myself to be at the place I always cherished it to be. So I made it a point to visit Stratford upon Avon, uh, also Scotland, and the Globe Theatre uh, to uh, complete my literary uh, pilgrimage. So first and foremost, I would also like to talk about uh, Stratford upon Avon, where the st real story begins. So I would like to share my screen. Just give me a moment. Okay, is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, very clear. It's clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, I visited Stratford upon even in the year. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. You continue. Okay. okay. Thank you. So I uh, visited Stratford upon Avon in the year 2018, and uh, really I feel very proud to be there. I was very proud to be there. And uh, see, this is the Trinity Church, uh, very near to Shakespeare's birthplace. And he was baptized here. Uh, later on, uh, his marriage also took place here. And later his uh, burial is also in this place. Uh, he's placed beside his wife, uh, Anne Hathaway, as well as the elder daughter, Suzanne. So, and this church is very famous. Uh, tourists from all over the world, from all nooks and corners, come to visit this place. And this uh, place also has an epitaph uh, near, uh, uh, near the tombstone of uh, William Shakespeare, uh, which uh, says his epitaph is carved into a stone slab, which covers his grave, includes a curse against moving his bones, which was carefully avoided during restoration of church in 2008. So no one, <laughs> no one could uh, uh, move him. And when this church went for a restoration, uh, they took uh, all the care so that his bones should not move. Otherwise, uh, a curse would fell upon him. So uh, you see, this is a, as, uh, as soon as this is a very uh, peaceful uh, town, uh, Stratford upon Avon, and. Uh, uh, with uh, lots of scenic beauty and uh, upon the river Avon, that is why it is called Stratford upon uh, Avon. And as soon as you enter Stratford upon Avon, you can see the Henley Street and the largest house in Hel Henley Street is Shakespeare's birthplace. So just near to it is Annie Hathaway's cottage and uh, 
there is also Shakespeare's new place. And what is Shakespeare's new place? Shakespeare's new place is the second house that William Shakespeare bought, which was a very costly property. And uh, when he went to London and he became a very successful uh, playwright and dramatist, he earned lots of money. And when he came back, he uh, uh, purchased this plot, uh, which was a very big one and uh, a very vast uh, property, which is called the new place. So later on, uh, after his birthplace, he uh, shifted, he, he and his family shifted to the new place. So right at the end of the street, one can visit the famous Edward Grammar School, where Shakespeare um, studied how to read and write, translating Latin and Greek speeches. And uh, his, style, his style was very different. His style was uh, lyrical. It was different from other playwrights because he did not go to other uh, colleges or universities. In those times, uh, these um, uh, all the countryside had some grammar schools and uh, students used to uh, study in these grammar schools. And mind you, uh, girls were not allowed. They were tabooed. They were not allowed to uh, study in these grammar schools. So uh, this is a very uh, peaceful type of a very small town. Uh, it is not very, I mean, catchy or um, the landscapes are also very beautiful. And the population is also uh, not much. It is only 30,000. And when, uh, I, when I came here, uh, anyone who comes here uh, upon Stratford upon Even should always make the bookings first. So this is just, I would like to share some information. And uh, if uh, the bookings are to be made in advance, uh, right in four to, fee, four to five weeks. And each, uh, uh, it has a fees of about uh, 26 to 30 pounds. Unless and until you are um, you have a book yourself, you shouldn't go there. Otherwise, you would be greatly disappointed. And uh, <clears throat> while coming to Stratford upon Avon, I also visited. Being an educationist, I also visited uh, Oxford, the colleges of Oxford and uh, Cambridge. Uh, there was also uh, there's a very big, uh, beautiful palace, uh, which is very magnanimous ca castle um, called the Warwick Castle. It is Warwick, not Warwick. <clears throat> and it is very magnificent and uh, it uh, depicts the lifestyle of the kings and the queens of those times. And it is placed in a very beautiful, very scenic, beautiful place. So uh, at the, our last stop, uh, because we uh, had booked a package. And so after viewing all this, we uh, landed at Shakespeare's birthplace uh, at Stratford upon Avon. So uh, the population, I already told uh, they don't have much population, about 30,000 people are there, but more than 3 million visitors come here every year from all the year, from all the nooks and corners of the world. Uh, there are street performers, cafe shops lined up in Henley Street. See, this is the Henley Street. And on either side, you can see these are the row houses. And one will be, uh, one among them will be Shakespeare's birthplace. So you can see so many tourists uh, have uh, arrived in here. They are all having a merry time and they have also come here to visit the Shakespeare's birthplace. And uh, 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 in this street, there are also street performers and uh, they amuse you and entertain you. Uh, it is up to you. If you want, you can just watch them, watch the plays that they want to show. They can. They also show. Uh, they also recite some poems, the sonnets. But and if you don't feel like, you can just pass by. So then there's a. a uh -huh. So this is. These are the places. They are all located at the Henley Street, where Shakespeare's birthplace is located. Now this is the Shakespeare Center. This is a modern setup which is just near, um, near the Shakespeare's birthplace. And uh, as soon as you enter here, uh, you uh, you are shown a documentary because uh, this is a tourist place. Many of them are not aware of Shakespeare or maybe uh, they want to know more about Shakespeare. And so uh, as soon as you enter, you are shown a documentary of Shakespeare from the very beginning to the end. Uh, that is also very interesting and uh, a part of the package. 
and uh, then you later move on to a modern hall and these walls are all adorned with uh, shakespeare's um, paintings and uh, depicting his life and achievements which shows that he was born uh, on 23rd april 1564 in stratford upon avon warwickshire england 150 kilometers away from london and his parents were john shakespeare and mary erdon arden and had uh, about eight children The couple had two daughters who died as babies before William was born, who was the eldest survivor, and so he inherited this property. This is uh, also followed by Shakespeare's wall and depicting his journey as a playwright. Uh, you can see this is a simple. This house is a very simple. This is Shakespeare's place. This is the Shakespeare's birthplace. This is a simple timbered home, and now this has been converted into a museum called Mecca of Lovers of Literature. This house was uh, built by John Shakespeare, who was the mayor of the town. Uh, he was also a wool dealer and a glove maker. He lived here with his family, and he also carried out his business from this place. Just see, these are the pictures that I could get from there, and uh, because it is also a famous tourist. tourist place frequented by thousands and thousands of visitors which also includes uh, mind you it also includes john keats r s stevenson walter scott charles dickens to name a few and uh, the house reflects the family life of uh, shakespeare as it would have been in his times when he was born and uh, william shakespeare you can see william shakespeare inherited this house and later on this was transferred to um, uh, his daughter susan and from her it went to daughter elizabeth who had no children so uh, no direct descendants of shakespeare are known uh, elizabeth passed it on to her husband thomas hurd and later on it was converted into an inn and then it lied in shambles it was unattended it uh, met such a uh, sorry figure it shows such a sorry figure so uh, see the in uh, huh. the important thing that at one side of uh, this place shakespeare's place we can you can also see rabindranath tagore's bust so this is a, this was a very prou uh, proud moment for us to uh, see uh, rabindranath tagore at such a great place which shows the magnanimity of this personality no doubt you can see that this was there's a small garden just outside shakespeare's birthplace you can see these are the pictures that that can be shown these are the pictures of the houses these this is a wall which shows shakespeare with some other paintings and the characters of his plays this is also showing the lineage on a wall this is inside shakespeare's living room you can see even the square place this is shakespeare's bed the cot and these are his things pots pans gloves and uh, later on what happened in the 18th century an american showed interest in uh, purchasing this house and because he was so shocked to see it in such a sorry state and so in 1847 his name was uh, uh, his name was t burman and uh, he uh, purchased this place and later on shakespeare's birthplace trust was formed which looks and manages the affair of this place and in order to save the building where shakespeare was born uh, a public campaign was uh, launched and this was supported by charles dickens and the property was purchased by an auction uh, by shakespeare's birthplace trust in 1847 for 3000 pounds and uh, the trust also helps to keep shakespeare's life and promotes the enjoyment and understanding of his see uh, these are the things that uh, are kept as sort of museums now shakespeare's birthplace is converted into a museum and uh, i tell you those museums are really very beautiful they are all so neat and clean and uh, lots of research work uh, they undergo uh, it is not like uh, our museums 
Uh, I'm sorry to say that. And uh, see, this is the roof of the house. It is kept intact. It is kept as it was. It, it is such a difficult task. Can you imagine? 400 years before, but still they have retained each and everything. You see, this is a wooden basket which uh, Shakespeare might have used or his father and mother might have used. And you can see the walls. Uh, see, there are even cracks, but they have maintained. They, they spent thousands and thousands of pounds to maintain this place. This is the beauty of uh, um, th these people. And uh, uh, these, uh, this is also, uh, so see, all these things are very uh, securely placed in uh, Shakespeare's uh, house, which you can go and see. And uh, this is a falcon in chair, which is also called the Bigfoot chair, which was used by Shakespeare. So it is intact, it is kept, and uh, can you imagine how much of effort they must be keeping uh, or using or doing to keep this uh, things intact and in such a uh, in in its in its grandeur? And uh, you can see this. See, this is the place. This is the candlestick, which is still kept um, over there at one corner, and they must be using it. And this is the living place, a table where they must have been working. And uh, this is, uh, this is, I'd like to tell about this. This is a cradle. On the extreme left side, you can see this is the cradle. This is the cradle where Shakespeare was born. And um, uh, this, uh, this is Anne Hathaway's dress, Shakespeare's wife's dress. Uh, it is still kept intact. It is, uh, you can see there at one corner of the house. And uh, this cradle, which is uh, made of uh, oak, and it was as, as early as uh, 16th century, it was also used by his parents for upbringing other children rather than William Shakespeare. And uh, just beside the cradle, you can see uh, this uh, boarded chest. This is late 16th century boarded chest, which is decorated with sticking, sticking lattice pattern. And this was fairly common on lower status furniture as it was cheaper and easier than carving. It dates around 1550. Its hinges and locks have been replaced later and implying it was used to hold something valuable at some point of his life. So Shakespeare must have been using it to keep his valuables uh, in this boarded chest. So see, these are the things that they, Shakespeare must have used while glove making. And this is, uh, at, uh, this is also a sort of office that they use they, because they used to sell things from here. See, this is almost gone, but still they have kept it as it is. And these are things that are kept there, They're well preserved. This is the boarded stool. This was made in 1540 and 1560. And uh, these all are well researched. It's not that they just uh, kept it and they have said uh, it is uh, of that period. Uh, and they have got all the validity with it, attached with it. And that were, you can see uh, nailed or they were pegged it together. And this is uh, also kept in the hall. And this is the window uh, which uh, uh, which overlooks the Henley Street, and this uh, this window is just outside his uh, bedroom, where Shakespeare was also born. So you had also seen the garden. That garden must have grown. Uh, they must have grown a range of vegetables, and uh, it is also uh, known that. Uh, uh, Shakespeare also had some pigs and hens. Now and this has been converted into a garden. And uh, there is also a story about uh, uh, a mulberry tree which uh, Shakespeare had uh, in his uh, new place, the new place, the second property that he had bought. And uh, later on it was um, bought by some uh, Francis uh, Gastrel. And... Uh,
but uh, he was so furious because all the tourists used to come and they used to ask for that mulberry tree they used they wanted uh, all the tourists wanted to see the mul mulberry tree and he was in uh, such a fit of rage one day he uh, chopped off that mulberry tree because he did not want uh, such disturbance and english people they they just don't want any disturbance in their life uh, be it shakespeare or anyone else <laughs> so uh, this was very unfortunate but uh, this was done he chopped off that tree so uh, this museum this this uh, house of shakespeare has been converted into a museum as i already told you and this is now uh, looked after by the trust called uh, shakespeare's uh, birthplace trust uh, the trust uh, also runs world class award winning uh, programs uh, of formal and informal education programs and they also conduct literary lectures to encourage the appreciation and uh, uh, the study of shakespeare's works and uh, they also believe that uh, shakespeare is not only for all time but he is for everyone and having that first hand experience of uh, shakespeare should be an opportunity for every child this is what is their belief the trust uh, depends entirely on the income generated through their supporters the visitors and donors and it is most significant uh, uh, shakespeare charity in the world and it promotes the appreciation and study of plays and other works of william shakespeare it um, preserves the birthplace the library uh, the various manuscripts and uh, various records of historic interest uh, there are pictures photographs and objects of antiquity uh, with particular reference to the life and times of shakespeare and one more important thing is that uh, it is also the headquarter of international shakespeare association uh, this is such a proud moment for me to also acknowledge this fact that even we are doing the same we also have a shakespeare society of central india uh, at the heart of uh, the uh, country in nagpur and uh, thanks to the motivation and inspiration of our founder member uh, dr pranuti chakravarti uh, who decided uh, to start this um, shakespeare society of central india and under this banner uh, every year we are performing different uh, programs we are taking different programs and in a way we are also keeping shakespeare alive and thus contributing a bit to the international shakespeare association so uh, this was my slide for uh, stratford upon avon i hope you must you might have liked it uh, now i would like to move on towards the next slide which is about uh, the globe theater just a minute i'll just take a few seconds is my slide yes madam it's this bill yes can you see can you see yes yes ma'am so the next slide is uh, of uh, globe theater i hope uh, i did not bore you all <laughs> i don't know because this is all one way i can't see i can't uh, listen to anyone um so uh, now coming to the second uh, slide of uh, globe theater uh, i will like to tell in order to understand a uh, globe theater it is a uh, very pertinent or very essential to know about the background associated with uh, the earlier theaters and um, there are about four prominent theaters uh, and the globe theater was not the first theater uh, to be built in london i'll just okay my slide is visible uh, vasini madam please can you tell me yes madam it is visible yes okay so uh, there were about uh, four uh, prominent uh, theaters and the globe theater was not the first theater and uh, in, uh, in london others were the rose the see you can see the picture of uh, the globe theater which is now and uh, uh, these were the uh, hope 
the hope the swan the rose and the theater the, the theater was the main theater of those times and however globe was the most famous one as the plays were performed there uh, shakespeare's plays had a great impact on theater throughout the history due to the moral and the themes the stories possessed and contained that intelligence the first proper theater was the theater which was built at shoreditch london in 1576 and the owner was james burbage it was on lease and when the lease ran out the land owner refused to renew it so uh, he had taken it on lease for about 21 years and when uh, uh, the lease uh, ran out uh, or it was um, when uh, the landlord did not want the land owner wanted uh, uh, Bar- uh, james barbish to move away and uh, because uh, because he thought that he would have the theater all for himself and uh, he would own it um, because the lease is uh, now uh, lapsed and uh, but john uh, james barbage he realized that now he has to shift his theater in a new uh, accommodation for his company so what he did while um, this um, uh, this land owner uh, mr giles was enjoying christmas time christmas party and he was out of his country uh, james barbage along with the carpenter and few of his other men uh, he stripped off the entire theater down and uh, he shifted the timber and the entire thing to a warehouse uh, so that he could not uh, give it to mr giles who thought that uh, he was going to own the entire place now then uh, because uh, christmas is not a very appropriate time uh, to uh, shift the entire thing or rebuild a new theater so he kept it in the warehouse and uh, uh, later on when uh, things were conducive he started building it he bought some tenements in black friars and converted them into an indoor uh, playhouse Uh, however the neighbors objected to it because in those days it was not very a good it was theaters were not uh, considered to be very good thing or uh, so uh, and they all objected to it and this theater was also again closed down and after the death of uh, james burbage his son uh, richard burbage um, uh, rented a plot on back side uh, on the bank side sorry in 1589 and it was a 20 south sided polygon with galleries on a uh, three levels and the roof was also thatched as it was cheaper uh, than the tiles and the burbage shared this building uh, with five members of lord chamberlain's and uh, william shakespeare so it was sort of a joint venture and uh, they all started uh, this uh, theater all the things that they got from uh, the theater uh, the timber from the theater was uh, later on used to build uh, this theater so part of the reason for the theater being built was to allow the props and production to become quite sophisticated it allowed for uh, special effects and it also had trap doors and a place where uh, at those times they were a sort of a vehicle uh, for a propaganda and uh, queen elizabeth also put some regulations on theaters and so they did not have a very nice time or jovial time or uh, they did not have uh, much uh, money to earn uh, because of all these restrictions and uh, queen elizabeth also put some regulations on theaters and sometimes uh, it, this also happened that the audience became very violent and they needed controlling so um, there were all uh, some of them were drunkards and uh, they were um, and they used to uh, and they were from the lower strata of the society and so, soon so there were lots of objections raised and the theaters were banned within london so it was banned and they were then again forced to move to the south side of river thames so um, you can see and uh, in, in this in this theater uh, william had a 10% of finance and the construction was uh, the globe which was built in 1599 Uh, near the thames with a vote from the theater which i already told and uh, they dismantled the theater and brought uh, the entire timber here and uh, some of his famous plays that uh, were displayed here were uh, julius caesar hamlet henry v the macbeth and but they also had to uh, despite all these things they also had to uh, compete with some of the uh, nearby theaters like the rose the swan and the fortune and uh, 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 later on uh, 
let me come to the other side so this is this slide is very important and this is the slide which shows the bank side okay this is the bank side of uh, west which is in west of london bridge uh, just behind is is the london bridge and on the south of thames uh, uh, river known as the bank side this is known as the bank side and this is also a part of london borough market which is called satar it is not it is not south park it is satar which which was a shady side of uh, greater london and i tell you it was frequented by prostitutes bear baiting bull fighting and pick pot pocketers were also there it was such a unsavory place and uh, and uh, near this uh, globe there were also bear garden where the londoners and uh, uh, attended some sort of uh, an entertainment the bears were chained by neck they were attacked by, you can see it see all these uh, these uh, i can't even show you the uh, uh, spherical ground is there you can see and uh, this uh, these and uh, some tenements also are there uh, small places where people used to reside and this were the these were the bank side residents they also enjoyed this uh, entertainment and this was sort of a entertainment ground to all of them it was like a farm or a field and all the other play houses like the swan rose and they were also nearby they were also located here and uh, vast deposits of uh, animal bones uh, skulls and mugs were discovered from the uh, this uh, ruins uh, which were excavated later and uh, the globe was this globe was the glory of the bankside entertainment and the lure of uh, london and uh, museum of london archaeological survey has found vast deposits of animal bones providing evidence that 200 or so dogs were trained full in public view on sundays and a uh, horse with harness and a monkey tied to the saddle was brought in the ring and it was so attacked by six to seven dogs and fresh dogs were supplied and uh, replaced which replaced the uh, dead ones so uh, uh, this uh, globe was then built in the year so you can see this they were all dressed up and they used to come this was a sort of entertainment to them and uh, this glow theater was um, uh, a with which william shakespeare was associated was built in 1599 and it was also destroyed in 1630 13 due to the during the performance of uh, henry 8 uh, as they fired a cannon to announce the arrival of uh, king henry which set the globe a place and uh, no one was hurt or injured as people escaped from the two doors Uh, i would sh uh, later on sh uh, show you those slides and uh, a year later after this uh, fire which destroyed the globe a second globe was constructed again uh, in 1614 and uh, they used a tiled roof instead of the thatched roof and operated well till 1642 till 1642 they all had a very nice period and they got lots of money and but uh when the puritans uh, suppressed all the plays believing that theaters were the places of evil sins because of all these big pockets and all uh, they thought that it was a, a wrong place to be in uh, in the premises of london and so uh they uh, ravaged they demolished all this and the tenements were built on the premises and the gold globe remained a ghost for almost 352 years and this globe having been constructed of the timbers of the pre previous globe was of the same size and shape as the original making remains if it has survived today uh, it would have been very cherishable so uh, in 1662 the great fire of london uh, destroyed entire london and buried the globe to the ground so no trace of globe theater was later on found so this is all about the second globe so this this slide also tells how globe was more important than swan the rose as shakespeare plays were presented at the globe and they became more popular as went as time went by and uh, how sorry they also introduced some special effects such as flying mechanisms there were trap doors which made it all the more interesting so here comes the picture of the globe theater
uh, it is a three storied building and it accommodates almost 3000 uh, people it was an open air theater with capacity of 1000 gra groundings uh, if you could see um, the center the center place which is open to the sky that was the place of the groundlings and about 100 groundlings uh, used to stand uh, on the yard shoulder to shoulder that, that means they were all jam packed uh, they were also called the stinklers because the whole day they used to work and with all the sweat and all they used to come to watch the place and so they were also called as the stinklers who paid a penny they had to pay a penny to enter the theater and it was considered as the best place to be uh, close to the stage which was sheltered by the roof on the stage but because if it uh, you can see the roof is uh, entirely open so if it rained and uh, london is known for its uh, weather uh, uh, either sometimes it is very hot sometimes it's very cold sometimes any time it starts raining so Uh, so this is uh, the groundlings on those days uh, shouted on the actors they also uh, threw things on them and if they did not like the play so this was also um, uh, and they used to pay uh, if they have to sit at uh, the side stand see you can see three layers of first second and the third layer um, besides the groundlings just uh, near the stage so they had to pay more uh, two pennies more to sit in the galleries and this roofless yard allowed sunlight sunlight to enter uh, and illuminate the stage and there were no curtains there as you can see the stage is all open there's and there were no curtains and uh, that opened or closed at the beginning or end of the play as we have and uh, they play they now uh, at this Uh, juncture uh, we have to pay 5 pounds which is still cheaper than a penny which is 400 years ago which was 400 years ago and it had no backdrops uh, it had no lightings no props and uh, no uh, can but only cannons were used at that times and uh, the audience participated as they were standing closely in front of the actors and no um, umbrellas were allowed uh during those days because uh, they used to get violent at times and they had only one play in a day uh, they only had it in the afternoons uh, because uh, they could not afford candles or the, there were no lighting systems in those days and the groundlings uh, they could now stand now the groundlings the groundlings are still there uh, even in the present globe Uh, if you go there it is still uh, there they have because it is a faithful recreation of the previous globe and but now it is a concrete floor uh, which is a modern version of the earth floor and um, in shakespeare's times if it rained they all got wet but now uh, umbrellas are also allowed and one can stand near the stage which has a shed and it is a fantastic place to be in and one has to be dressed appropriate for all weathers so uh, this had no uh, backdrops no lightings or props but cannons uh, were used and uh, at the just see at the just a minute see uh, just uh, at the side uh, they uh, there were two boxes and uh, these boxes were called the gentlemen's boxes and uh, at the back of the stage there was a wall with two to three doors uh, leading to the um, tiring house meaning to dress or to attire oneself and uh, the props and backbones were few sometimes a prop used to uh, use in one scene remained there because it was too heavy to be removed so because it was too heavy they used to keep it just like that and uh, the next uh, uh, play started and actors were were playing they were gods demons ghosts and all supernatural powers it would prop up from the down uh, from the trap door on the stage and would also descend off the stage so uh, ripple of metal were used for thunder effect fireworks were used to donate uh, denote omens meteors comets or the wrath of almighty as uh, shakespeare's plays are full of and if an actor suffered an injury or fencing wound he would just simply slap his hands against a pouch which was a pig bladder beneath his shirt and uh, release what appeared as blood so uh, you could also witness a blood shed in those times and uh, regarding the women characters all the women characters in shakespeare times were played by young boys uh, between the age of 
18 to 21 with a full makeup and they also wore uh, they also wore flared and fill, frilled gowns and uh, Gio, um, juliet ophelia Cleopatra, all they were men. <laughs> no women were allowed till 1660 uh, because women were banned and it was illegal for women to be on stage and they were not at all tolerated. And there were two boxes, uh, two on the right and two on the uh, left. And these were called as the gentleman boxes where they, they were, uh, these gentlemen were heavily dressed and uh, uh, they also paid more but they they came here not to watch the plays but uh, paid more so that they could be seen by the public uh, uh, the play was not visible from the from these boxes the plays were not visible because uh, that was um, at the back side of the stage but they should uh, look uh, they should be visible to the audience though so they used to come with all geared up with all heavy dresses so that uh, and they belonged naturally to the highest state of the society they were least interested in the place and they wanted only the audience should see them so that was one thing and uh, uh, I would also like to tell that plays in those times, for example, if it was a Hamlet, uh, it is an uh, interesting example uh, that Hamlet begins in the middle of the afternoon. And uh, we can't tell uh, by looking at the stage that if it is midnight. And uh, so uh, what they had, they had a bell uh, in the middle of the stage, uh, which used to ring 12 times to give you an idea that it was uh, it was midnight. And... Uh, and uh, 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 also uh, the play, uh, uh, there was also uh, only those people, they used to come there only to see the, to listen to the play, to hear to the play. And uh, the play starts, uh, for example, the Hamlet stars, uh, which is who's there, who's there, which gives you an idea or which gives you, you an clue, uh, a clue that the soldiers can't see very well because it is nighttime. And they say it is cold, which suggests it is a cold winter night. The character also tell you what they are doing and what they and when they die, they say that they are dying. For example, Polonius, uh, the Lord, he is uh, stabbed and he says, "I am slain. I am dying." Hamlet's mother Gertrude is poisoned and she says, "I am poisoned." And when Hamlet dies, he says, "I die." Uh, you know it because uh, they are telling you and people used to say we are going to hear a play or uh, we are going to listen to a play um, instead of saying that we are going to watch a play. Uh, they did not have uh, much to show you in case of lighting and setting or scenery or props uh, which was not really possible in Shakespeare's time because uh, they showed so many plays in short amount of time and they had to get the people in take their money they have to get them out get them back again in get more money out of them and then again get them out change the play so they did not have 8 million people in those days in london to keep coming back to them in their theater so these are the slides that you can see and uh, this uh, is the model of the Globe Theatre that you can see now. Uh, now there is a, a, an exhibition area uh, fully dev devoted to you. You can go and see all the uh, things that are kept from uh, Shakespeare's times. And uh, <clears throat> at that time, uh, because uh, the uh, Globe was completely uh, demolished, there was no trace of Globe Theatre at that time. And uh, an American named Sam Vanamaker, uh, he, uh, he, lived, he, he was uh, born and brought up in uh, Chicago, Illinois. And uh, uh, he was a drama student and he used to perform form a Shakespeare's play and he joined the Blackfriars company who were playing at the Great Lakes uh, World Fair in Cleveland. Uh, uh, Cleveland also uh, last uh, a few months back I also visited Cleveland where they have a very beautiful uh, globe theater uh, which is uh, uh, again a replica of uh, the main globe theater that we have in uh, London and it is in uh, Ohio State uh, 
this uh, replica is also a very beautiful one and uh, uh, you can also witness lake erie and uh, lake michigan lake ontario and uh, uh, this boy uh, sam vanamaker the american uh, he later on became an actor in hollywood and in 19 in, what happened in 1949 he visited uh, united kingdom uh, while he was filming his uh, movie which was called uh, give us this day and uh, because he was an ardent admirer or a great fan of uh, shakespeare he wanted and he just went uh, to look around for the uh, original site to look for the globe theater and as he was a, um, and uh, uh, to his utter disappointment uh, all he found was a plaque on a brewery wall and uh, there were some tenements old heritage buildings he he, he saw them and but he could find uh, no globe theater at all so he was shocked he was shocked to find this place and in an utter disgust and he decided to contribute in the great revival and interest in shakespeare um, shakespeare's uh, globe so next uh, sam returned in uk in in the year 1951 uh, for another film and he decided now to stay there and he created his uh, first act and perform performance center in britain and in 1960 he returned to us to act in one of shakespeare's play uh, called Oth othello now uh, fueled by his earlier disappointment and uh, discovering in the late 1940s and the love of shakespeare uh, he set out to rebuild and reconstruct the globe theater on the bank site so the entire story that i have told about about the burbage about giles and about the tenants and about the first and the second and uh, globe theater was only to come to this point because now we uh, now in london we can see a new globe which is called the shakespeare's globe and this was made by uh, another uh, important personality called sam vanamaker vanamaker so uh, you know, he uh, because of his love of shakespeare he started uh, rebuilding and constructing a globe theater on the same site on the bank side of london he found the um, Uh, he then found the shakespeare he founded this uh, shakespeare globe trust and international uh, shakespeare globe center and his final and his final attempt to rebuild the faithful uh, reconstruction and recreation of the globe uh, in its original um, back side while many of them thought that it was impossible to achieve because uh, certainly this was an uh, this was a herculean task it was a difficult task to um, uh, firstly he was an outsider he belonged to us now he is in uh, he wants to uh, rebuild the globe theater uh, maybe he would get permission maybe uh, he would not and uh, despite all this dilemma uh, he uh, he was determined to uh, uh, promote this and to uh, rebuild a globe theater and finally he achieved also so uh, many of them thought that it was a really impossible task uh, to achieve he worked for about 20 years and overcoming series of obstacles one can just uh, write a research or one can do a, a thesis can be made on the on the obstacles that he faced while making this uh, globe and uh, uh, then but still he achieved it at the end but sadly uh, he could not live to see it inaugurated on june 1997 by the queen herself so this globe was built uh, at the same place and it was the faithful recreation of the globe and uh, i would also uh, later on tell you uh, when i go through the slides i would tell how um, uh, difficult task it was and how uh, similar it was to the and how um, uh, faithful recreation it was of the original globe so uh, 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 sam vanamaker as well as his architect uh, john corsi he also died he could not see the inaug uh, inauguration of this new globe theater uh, but we all have much to thank sam uh, sam vanamaker and his determination he also had uh, and this uh, sam vanamaker uh, um, also had cancer and uh, because of uh, this uh, Uh, he died untimely uh, he could not see uh, his globe theater inaugurated uh, on june 27 1997 so this new uh, globe theater also has some distinctions and differences and uh, uh, I, uh, you can see see this is 
the Shakespeare's globe that you can see. Just opposite, you can see th there is the river Thames. And there's a great wall, a very big wall, uh, which is painted um, uh, with a very beautiful painting of Shakespeare. And this was a very proud moment for me to stand in front of it. <clears throat> you can see these are the differences that Shakespeare, at the globe at Shakespeare's time and uh, at, at now. Uh, the modern globe still is in use today and uh, lots of plays are staged. The technique is still same. Tra Trapdoors are used, flying mechanisms are used, special effects are also used the same way. And uh, his uh, plays are still relevant, relevant today and, and everyday li life now as it was in the past. And the language also hasn't changed in Shakespeare's play when it was performed today. Yes, it is uh, understood by uh, by the audience. You can see these are the small differences from that Globe Theater. And uh, uh, one thing that I would like to mention was uh, in those times, they had to be very careful when they wrote the plays in 1500. Because uh, when they were talking about politics or royalty, they had to be very careful. And everything had to go through the Chamberlain's men before being performed to check if it was suitable. Uh, if, if they found this, uh, anything objectionable, they had to uh, delete it. So, however, today, uh, most uh, justified subjects are allowed to be mentioned or performed. And uh, costume at that time uh, had uh, sign, was a sign of status and uh, they acted as if it was a fashion show. But today they are more, uh, they just represent the character. Uh, they don't go for the much fanfare. And sometimes uh, these uh, uh, characters today, also you can find them in jeans and in their casual clothes, uh, clothes and, and acting Shakespeare plays. And uh, when I was there, uh, I also saw that they stopped the uh, play uh, in the midst and the, uh, one of the character also had his birthday. So the, <laughs> a table was brought, a cake was put in and candles were lit. And and uh, he, uh, his birthday was also celebrated and later on the play resumed. So this is the modern version. And uh, lighting is uh, also an important part of the theater today. In the past, they only had daylight. So they, the performance was only on the afternoons. And in Shakespeare times, the lines were often given to them on the day of the show. And uh, they were also prompted. But today, lines are uh, learned well in advance. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, when I visited uh, a day earlier, a uh, uh, Shakespeare re uh, plays a rehearsal was going on and they were rehearsing uh, the play. So certain uh, uh, compromise are to be made, uh, are made uh, recreating the globe. For example, it is now made of uh, green oak and not from the 23 year uh, old timber of dismantled building. Certain compromises were made for the fire safety regulations also. And these entitled making, making the stairways uh, a little broader or wider and uh, the, also increasing the roof uh, entrances uh, positioning of uh, the sprinklers, walls in the thatched gallery, rooftop, and because uh, in, in order, because uh, they have to take some uh, safety measures, and uh, uh, also an electric wiring is there, and the size of the audiences are also restricted to 16,000 instead of uh, 3,000. And uh, so, uh, and during the pandemic, I think uh, it must have reduced more. Now, I don't think they would enter entertain even uh, 1,500 uh, spectators or visitors. So, the uh, so you can see this is the Globe Theatre and just opposite uh, to it, you can see the River Thames. And just nearby to this Globe Theatre is the world famous London Bridge. So, these are the pictures that I... Uh, took and this was certainly a proud moment for me, no doubt. I could stand there and I really cherish it. And this is the no, now the globe, new globe theater that uh, Sam Vanamaker made. This is also has the mention of the architect uh, Theo Crosby, uh, who also died, who could not see um, it being inaugurated. And he, this one is, he is Sam Vanamaker. Now, these are all the photographs of the exhibition, which is displayed there. They have got a very beautiful and very big hall, which displays all the things that Shakespeare's play had. So I'll just uh, 
show you all these one by one. This is the bust of San Vanamaker. And this is the model of Globe Theater. You can see the tenements uh, which are still there. These are heritage buildings, and so they can't be demolished. They are still there. They can't. Uh, in London, you can see in this there is a law that they cannot even um, they cannot even uh, displace a brick. All the houses you you could see they are all in one order. Whatever restoration you have to. Make whatever alteration you have to make, you can make it at the back side or you can make it inside the house, but the outer structure remains safe. It is a law. They cannot, it is a pun punishable offense. So this is the photograph of the stage. And you can see uh, on either side, there. these are the four uh, gentlemen boxes where they used to pay more money. And uh, but they could not see. You can see the positioning. They cannot see the place. The best part is the best place is to to see the play is just the opposite direction. But these gentlemen preferred the uh, lots of money to be paid, but they should be audible or they should be visible to the audience. And this tells about the Shakespeare's Bank, the lure of which was called the lure of London. And uh, these were the acting companies, the Globe and the Bank, the glories of the bank. These are the things that they got it from the from the, the archaeological department. Got it, the historians. They got it from the bank side, excavations from the bank side. You can see all these mug spots swords they are just displayed there beautifully it is kept shells are there they used to play in gambling so these are the pictures that i shot there and uh, this also depicts and you know, tells the many changes that were made in the design of the group theater and the center as a whole as it was constructed and uh, the group theater which had a 24 sides uh, sides in this model but later on this was reduced to 20 sites based on the archaeological evidence uh, which was opened in 1997 by and this was completed by Sam Vanamaker the US hero This is the exhibition center. This also is a paid, uh, you have to get a ticket to reach there. The oak structure of globe today. So they have showed you the distinction from the original globe theater. And uh, now here they have shown the full lands, uh, the scapes, uh, the photographs of uh, the a construction which was going on in 1993 it appeared like this in 1994 it was then it completed so all the stages are being shown you can have a look and uh, even the literature is there you can read they also give you a, um, a, a mic um, and uh, your phone uh, which uh, as soon as you enter it if you uh, press the button 7, if you are standing in front of 7 counter, if you press the button 7, the, it will give you all the details about that place, about the place that you are being in front of you. See, from 95, 96, 97, all the stages of the construction of globe is given here. And all the plays that take place. And uh, these are, uh, the dresses are also displayed. And uh, you can see the dresses or costumes of Olivia and Viola in the 12th night. The actors, all these dresses are there. You can see they such magnificent dresses. They are all well preserved there. Dressing the Queen, Queen Elizabeth's dress is also there. These are the pieces, and uh, they also tell you about music at today's globe. 
and uh, in those times they had plays in the afternoon and the musicians uh, they had a musician gallery at the top i'm so sorry i forgot to, to tell you about it and uh, it had a fantastic the, the gallery produces a fantastic atmosphere and the sound was also wonderful as the shape combined together to travel well around as uh, around the place as there were there no there were no speakers or microphones they um, they had live music sometimes with new and sometimes with old instruments depending upon the play or the production house and uh, nowadays they are doing lots of modernizing and lastly when they had uh, shakespeare's uh, twelfth night which begins with a shipwreck uh, it was set in 1970s on the coast of uh, scotland so everyone were, wore a uh, flares glades and there were little um, glittable hangings from the ceilings and the whole stage was uh, like covered with white and gray like an inside of a true ship and the music was of 1970s and even the disco is permitted uh, because uh, the music will represent the si style or the play and the production house so they have no inhibition so uh, you can also see uh, lots of props that are there they are well preserved and they and they are, and they are well preserved on see you can see all these things um there um, the guilds these are all the props that they used this the this caused that storm effect and and at last you can also see the shakespeare's will this is the last slide and, uh, just before his uh, death uh, i think uh, two or three months before uh, shakespeare made a will that is also displayed here uh, in the shakespeare's exhibition hall and uh, this is the place of the exhibition so and this is also my last slide so this is all thank you so much thank you madam uh you can stop your screen sharing yes ma'am finished ma'am just a minute just a minute. yeah getting sharing yeah okay okay, okay ma'am so thank you madam for your wonderful piece of intellectual feast you served as a catalyst to our participants and literary aspirant to unwrap the hidden layers of mystery in shakespearean world and making them feel a virtual roller coaster ride to globe theater Thank you once again, madam. Now we would move towards our next segment of scholarly presentation. For this, I feel proud to introduce a very renowned academician, Dr. T. R. Murli Krishnan, sir, who is a who is an associate professor in Department of English in M. E. S. Asma B. College, Kodungallur. He has put in twenty-seven years of service in various aided colleges under Muslim Education Society. He. was an approved uh, research uh, supervisor to part time phd category b of bharatiya university coimbatore he has produced two phd from the university now he heads the research department of english in mes asma b college kodungallur sir is a member of the editorial reviewer panel in four national and international journals he has authored three books on english language discourse studies and linguistics Sir was a member of the Board of Studies PG Department in MG University, and presently is a part of Board of Studies Calicut University in UG English Studies. Sir is the recipient of ELT Research Partnership India Award in the year 2014-15. ELT Research Partnership, which is granted by the British Council in 
Sir has completed a minor research project financed by the UGC titled Narrative on the Indian Woman Foregrounding the Flustered and Flummoxed Female in 2011. He has been a resource person to various seminars on literature and quality assurance. Sir was a NAC IQAC coordinator for 11 years while working at MES College, Marampalli, Alua, Ernakulam. He has also published more than 50 papers in various international and national journals of repute. He is an evaluator of PhD thesis in more than 10 universities. Today, we are very privileged to listen to such a mastermind personality, Dr. T. V. Murli Krishnan, sir, who would deliver his scholarly discourse on the topic, the cross-cultural contours of celluloid of Shakespeare. With due respect, may I now invite Dr. T. V. Murli Krishnan, sir, to begin with his uh, scholarly presentation. Over to Muli Krishnan, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, I think I'm audible there. Yes, sir. Clear. Am I listening? Am I listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audio, video, both. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, let me first of all thank Dr. Jodi Pancha and uh, Dr. Pradeep Chakravarti for uh, inviting me to this program. Uh, I'm happy that uh, I am I'm actually addressing uh, a group of uh, participants who have already done uh, a detailed certificate course uh, related to Shakespeare. Uh, and I will be a uh, major I should say, like uh, the sessions that they have conducted, it, it comprised of uh, sonnets, uh, tragedy, comedy, and all that. And I am so happy that uh, I have got uh, a first hand experience of what uh, uh, Shakespeare is all about. Well, uh, I, I won't say it is, uh, it will be enough, you know. Uh, in a, in a matter of few days to understand Shakespeare fully, but at least uh, for the participants, it, it, it is actually one way of opening up a new domains of knowledge uh, related to Shakespeare. Uh, well, when I discussed this with Jodi Patil, ma'am, he she said, uh, you know, she she said what exactly your topic would be, and I said, like after going through the list, I. Said, said I will go for uh, cinema because we have seen a lot of adaptations of uh, um, Shakespeare uh, into films and I thought I need to discuss something about that. I know it is, uh, I don't know whether it is an appropriate time to discuss about films, especially uh, at this time, but still I will try my best to uh, consult it in half an hour what all things that we need to understand about Shakespeare and transforming Shakespeare into a medium of a celluloid. But I have two apologies to make. The first thing is uh, I don't have slides as I said, so you will have to see me only. There, there is no other option. Second is uh, I I use the word celluloid and that technology is, uh, and now it is almost a digital platform. So that way I would say there is a uh, topic as such, but I think the participants can surely follow what I'm going to speak about. Now it's uh, not of an age, but of all time. Now, this, this is a general statement that we uh, begin with. I am have made more than once a reference to this particular line because most of uh, uh, will surely, though of course, standing from the point of uh, correct also, like pro and right. But when we look into the text, you know, like you can call various forms, including films, ballet, and other uh, media also. Now, what is uh, interesting about Shakespeare is that you know, when you look into the text, I would call it as a hypotext, hypotext because uh, it is uh, something that is. Uh, we can find it as a material assets, hypotext. Now, this material, what we now understand as text, uh, is so open. Is so open in the sense, uh, I'll put it like this, it is not closed. It is an open text. Means 
anyone can open up do kind of a change according to his uh, like plan without breaking the general logic of presentation and talking about the general logic of presentation maybe uh, my my friends over there must have uh, got the information that towards uh, the peak of his career shakespeare was so uh, so uh, like uh, i should say uh, had that intelligence to to uh, make his place or present his place in such a way that he never gave the complete script to his uh, actors he gave them in terms of what we call as parts so a particular character will get his dialogues in other sequence and only at the end they they get a totality of what we call as what the text is all about or what the play is all about even though they know the source of the uh, uh, the drama that they are going to enact and what then happened is in such a way that uh, uh, shakespeare is aware that people you know sitting in the theater uh, maybe as uh, uh, dr rusha was referring to the ground starting from groundlings to people who are watching they used to hear the dialogues so closely that some people even wrote uh, some people even wrote those dialogues and it was uh, like uh, enacted in other theaters so, so there is this problem of even at those days around 400 years ago i should say the problem of copyright so adaptation was already happening at that time so shakespeare was rather careful and only by around 1620s you know what we have uh, the present day text of shakespeare has come out as an edition so there is a popular joke that shakespeare has not seen a complete verse of shakespeare the reason is like uh, the final text has been edited in such a way that we are not sure whether that was the original plan of shakespeare but generally it is an agreed upon fact that shakespeare has uh, come up with this kind of sequence now when you look into the text uh, of a shakespeare a hypotext of a shakespeare when you adapt that into films uh, i am reminded of what our own satyajit ray has said the reader sees what the author chooses to describe so uh, maybe those who are interested in film studies might know about the 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 idea called the author theory in the author uh, theory there is this idea that the, it, the finally it is all up to the author the director is every it is not just one party plays he he is involved in almost everything about that particular film similarly shakespeare was aware of this particular condition we can assume like that uh, believing that shakespeare uh, knew that the audience is ready for a particular package so the reader the audience sees what the audience so or the author chooses to describe so when you change or when you convert uh, 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 one medium to another like you you have to understand what must have gone into uh, the mind of the director or the author there as such uh, in regarding the the change of shape that has happened naturally we are aware about or we need to be aware about the grammar of film or what we call as in common language we can say the language of film so the language of film has to accommodate so many technical aspects too it is not just a product projection of a certain set of dialogues to continue a sequence of events so that people will get an end result what we now understand as what we now understand as theater or uh, drama the definition of drama whereas we we need to understand that in india for example in india and we have to understand that we had a we have we had a great tradition of drama but regarding films we we also need to know that shakespeare initially at that time maybe around 1940s up to starting from 1940s to 50s and people started reading as, as an academic text as an academic text we uh, we found ways of uh, vernacularizing shakespeare means placing shakespeare at a particular level so that people need to un- we will be able to the people will be able to understand shakespeare better so it was all uh, changed into the regional versions and that actually uh, say maybe those who are familiar with uttal dat those who those friends from bengal might know that and his jatra tradition you know that uh, that is an example of how uh, people adapt uh, from one media to the other and i won't forget that uh, the, the great hero of our times maybe starting from the earlier days where shakespeare was converted into 
uh, films. We we have the, the 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 superstar of that day, Lawrence Olivia, because he was the one who uh, popularized Shakespeare into the the medium of film, including his inimitable performance related to Hamlet, Richard the Third. Henry the four, fifth, etc. Now that was a very popular medium of expression during 1950s, where the text of Shakespeare was converted into a film by people like the great masters like uh, Lawrence Olivia. And uh, by 1980s, we have people uh, like Wilson uh, talking about, uh, say, for example, we making use of the comedy of errors in a film like Angur. We we have that in 1981. Gulsa are coming up with a film like that. So so what we need to understand that this tradition of adopting and adapting Shakespearean plays into film is something that we need to study. Of course, there are lots of study now. For the last 20 years, if you look into that, you have numerable papers coming about uh, coming up with the, the uh, say study on how Shakespeare has been adopted. into the indian conditions indian films and two uh, major directors i need to say that who have taken up a, a phenomenal uh, role in converting shakespearean plays into uh, the the form of uh, uh, film uh, we we all know the bollywood director vishal bharadwaj because he his uh, play for example his film omkara for example in 2016 uh he has made use of the the uh the theme or the text othello as it and we we have you know what we call as in something like a semi lawless rural area in uttar pradesh and we 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 have people like kesu uh, almost equivalent to kashio or we have the tyagi you know yago coming up and all that you know like we we have the story of uh, dolly we we have his uh, the, the wife of Uh, the langda tyagi for example uh, and indu for example and all these are part of the the, uh, the adaptation of shakespeare now so we uh, so we have haider we have makbul we have omkar now we we now call it as a trilogy as far as the, the adaptations are concerned now in kerala you now that is why i took a special interest in this because i come from there i come from kerala so naturally now in kerala we have a we have a director jayaraj who has uh, taken up the theme of othello in in the, in the, in the, the rather a famous film i should say called uh, kaliyattam uh, which which was released in 1997 and then he made use of kannagi the, the, the theme related to antony and cleopatra and he also made use of the theme of macbeth in his uh, film 2015 film called veeram so uh, in 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 this uh, and again there is another director vk prakash coming up with the film uh, karma yogi uh, which is again a, 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 an adaptation of hamlet so when you analyze these films there are number of papers i need to emphasize that number of papers written number of reviews number of uh, film studies uh, studies related to those films have come up and what do we get from these uh, studies so that that is something which we need to understand that when we when we actually read those studies we will understand that people have gone uh, in detail related to how shakespeare is relevant and how shakespeare still communicate uh, how he communicates still to the people through his texts say a, a major critic called john milton of course don't go by the other name john milton his famous essay called theorizing omkara now that is a famous essay now in his in that essay he argues that say uh, he studied vishal bharadwaj's uh, film he says uh, uh, othello he says he remains faithful to shakespearean tragedy but at the same time he tries to connect that to the contemporary indian times so you have the issue of caste you have the issue of the bio racial identity now all these are coming and the, the idea of color consciousness they all come into <coughs> they all come into the making of uh, uh, the play the, the uh, film omkar now because uh, as you know the the uh, uh, when you when you analyze omkar you you come to know that uh, 
this uh, the the um, the main character uh, played by uh, ajay devgan uh, his name is omkar ashukla and he is the son of a dalit mother and a higher caste father so he is called om omi and uh, sometimes he is often castigated as uh, half bred or half breed or half caste something like that so uh, that is why you have the disapproval on the part of father of desimana we, we call it as dolly in this film so uh, kamal tiwari's uh, regunath mishra that is a new character there you know he rejects uh, the possibility of a marriage between these two and uh, you know, like that you know it has been uh, brought into the indian context so when you analyze kaliyattam kaliyattam the same theme odallo but the the idea is it is it has been adapted in such a way that you you have uh, the representation of theyam the folk art of northern kerala the malabar i should say where in which the the central character uh, as we have odallo here he is one of he is called perimayan and he is one who who represents during the ritual he becomes god and once he uh, removes that particular uh, uh, attire he becomes an ordinary man so uh, this kind of you know uh, uh, like uh, the 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 representation of uh, the dual mind the, which is already there in uh, the original othello that is whether he is a more in the uh, say in venus or whether he has been accepted by the venetian Asian people, you know that kind of a struggle because he is always conscious about this double, uh, like that kind of a, an identity. Now this has been clearly explored even in uh, in this particular uh, film. So that way, you know, people can if, if you if you look into the creative directors. Now that is the beauty of Shakespeare as well as the directors also because they can easily make use of a particular theme by which you you have what we call as. Uh, the theme of shakespeare brilliantly being brought into the medium of film so uh, if you look into uh, makbul if you look into haider the same thing is happening you now th- that kind of adaptation is also going on like from one level to the other of course there are violations regarding e- even the plot say e- in the original othello we never see the death of iago whereas in omkara we have indu you know she she fights against the injustice that has been done and then he kills her own husband now uh, this has been brilliantly written by milton john milton uh, in his essay the rising omkara in, in published in 2004 so that that is something which we need to be clear we need to be aware when we discuss um, we have that particular situation of course it is uh, it's a very sensitive issue related to uh, the, the insurgency and discussion of how uh, military uh, uh, the, the problems of militants and mil- military uh, in uh, protagonist say for example haider mir now he he has just returned to his home in kashmir uh, from uh, yeah aligarh uh, muslim university and his father hiralal mir uh, is abducted and killed we all know that and uh, ophelia is you know is she is a journalist arshia is uh, by profession so all now uh, they are all natives of kashmir and at, at one level we have the background set in a typical uh, contemporary indian society whereas we we have uh, um, this issue of how to uh, read the contemporary india in terms of what shakespeare has already given as an input through his place in makbul for example macbeth that is the uh, thing uh, he is a, it is a typical you know, what we call as the underworld gangs like that kind of a thing uh, and lady macbeth is nimmi dangan becomes like his abbaji there and banco is kaka all these are there so uh, you you have the corrupt policeman you we have the purohit the pandit now there is also this what we call as a satirical representation of the, the modern civilized society you know now all these are there in makbul also so when you look into the actual study of uh, the place we will come to know that uh, it is all because of the brilliance of shakespeare that people could easily read into even the issues that our country is facing which which is something that we need to acknowledge because otherwise we we, we may not
Now, uh, regarding, uh, I, I made a mention of uh, the changes that has uh, brought in. Now, those are certain uh, like violations which people themselves will agree with because uh, it is not necessary that we have a, a play which has already been st uh, structured and that should be presented as such. Because, for example, in Othello, in Kaliyatam, uh, as I told you about the northern Malabar uh, area uh, cultural paradigm or the, the, way, the way in which it has been presented, we, we have this uh, like the, the uh, uh, particular sheet, uh, we can call it a, a very important uh, uh, metaphor as far as the bond between Othello and uh, Desdemona. Uh, in the original play, it is a handkerchief. So, uh, in Omkara, it is something else, you know, you, you know that. So, this way, you know, there are certain elements which are common, but they, they have been changed, they have been violated, just to accommodate that uh, there is a possibility of making people convinced that we have still jealous husbands, we have uh, still uh, like aspiring uh, people who want to go up in life. There are people who still feel that uh, they have what we call as uh, the, the, their father has been wronged, he has been killed because of certain reasons which are beyond our control. So the problem of the hero is often the problem of the, uh, sometimes the problem of the society as such. It is not just one man's problem, it becomes universal. And that universality is something that we need to acknowledge related to what we call as Shakespeare. That is why Shakespeare is still communicating. Shakespeare is still making us uh, like understand that, okay, this is what is going on. This is the kind of society that we are uh, like uh, living in. And we, it is easy to pick up Shakespeare and adapt and fix it in our context because it is still alive. The text is alive and open. It is not closed. Now, when you take a particular play of George Bernard Shaw, and if you do that now, people may not accept it because it is a closed text or any famous play of the early 20th century, except for maybe Waiting for Godot or other uh, like uh, plays of uh, Stop Hard. Now, otherwise, you know, if, if it is a dated period kind of a play, well, uh, there are limitations. There are limitations. Limitations. It, there is a possibility, but there are limitations. But as far as Shakespeare is concerned, uh, we, we can use it in any way. And uh, you know, there is this uh, famous adaptation of Iago, uh, in a film which is almost a comic film in uh, I think it is in 2009 where we have Iago as a nice person and Othello as a scheming uh, fellow who, who it is a comedy kind of a film uh, I think it is I, I forgot the name of the director so that is also there so it, it happens in a modern society uh, if it is possible you can just google it and find it I, I saw that uh, a few years back so, uh, this is also possible. You, you can make it funny. You can make it look funny. At the same time, you can get ideas, change it, transform it, and uh, appropriate in such a way that the translation becomes, it is not a question of fidelity. It becomes a matter of creativity. Now, that happens when we actually deal with uh, the themes of Shakespeare. Except for maybe his history plays, we, we, we can make use of all those we can we have we have excellent uh, uh, like like reproductions of Midsummer Night's Dream. We have excellent uh, reproductions of what we call as Tempest. Now, all these are there now, seen from the perspective of Caliban. Now these are there now, so there are possibilities. So only thing that we need to identify now we need to understand here is that you know, the the beauty of Shakespeare lies in his not uh, the way in which he has closed it, but it has kept it open to make people uh, get into with it, get into the text, uh, unlock it, use it in your own sense, uh, regionalize it, and then create new flavors out of that. You know. Generally, we don't uh, agree with you know, colonized objects uh, brought in India and then uh, making it great. We don't because we, we have this, if you have that nationalistic kind of a spirit. Whereas in Shakespeare, it is not necessary. We can easily uh, make it our own. We, we can uh, uh, make Shakespeare our own kind of a writer by ad uh, like adapting it to our conditions. So uh, with this with this few words, let me stop. Uh, I know uh, maybe a few teachers must have made reference to some of these points. But starting from now, I think my suggestion is only this. If it is possible, you, you better read some of his uh, uh, plays, uh, some of the studies related to plays. Watch those 
movies, watch those original movies as well as adaptations and find out what possibilities can be done. And you can engage yourself in what we call as uh, the, the study of uh, films. And I, I, before I sign off, uh, since it is from Vidarbha, so maybe I, I cannot uh, but mention about uh, Falke, for example, Dada Sai Falke. Uh, you all know about Raja Harishchandra and uh, maybe those, those who are interested in films might know about this. Uh, actually, when uh, Falke was uh, doing uh, that particular uh, picture uh, and again other I mean, some of his other famous movies, he was also producing a documentary of how to make a film. Just see the vision of that particular writer or maybe the creator there. It is not that he just made a film for the paper, purpose of making money. He studied all aspects of filmmaking and he even made a documentary, a film for the sake of how to make a film so that it maybe now the technology that he has used must have become obsolete. But uh, it is actually a great thing you know, during 1920s to, to, to do something like this to make people aware that this is something, uh, see it's, it also, it's almost 100 years now. This is something that is going to you know, stay for here for long. That idea is there. And so um, a big salute uh, to the great master, the father of uh, Indian uh, theater, uh, cinema, Falke also, Dada Sai Falke also. So with these few words, uh, let me conclude and let me wish all the participants the very best uh, in the days to come. Keep in touch with uh, the, the people around. Uh, read uh, a lot on this, uh, uh, the, the ideas that have been uh, presented, discuss, write papers uh, and interact with your students. So best wishes. Thank you all. Thank you very much, sir, for your stalwartly presentation. It was just like an intellectual dose of uh, for the academic fraternity. We rarely get this kind of opportunity to listen to the words of such an erudite scholar. We are very excited to look forward to more of your enthusiastic presentation ahead in our uh, upcoming Shakespeare and Society program and I Spill All Forum as well. Thank you very much, sir, once again. It is a proud privilege to have with us. Uh, thank you, sir. It is a proud privilege to have with thank us, you. Dr. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Pranuti Chakravarti, Madam, as a, an exceptional administrator and a vibrant learner known for her wisdom and knowledge as a chairperson of today's valedictory program. I request Dr. Pranuti Chakravarti, Madam, the chairperson of today's program, to enlighten our participants. Over to Pranuti Chakravarti, Madam. You are not audible, ma'am. I think she is not able to make it. Uh, yes, madam. Uh, I think uh, Jyoti can take over because it will take time. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, Jyoti? Yeah. Yes, no problem. Okay, so without much ado, yeah, uh, without much ado, we would move towards the concluding remark of this session. Uh, for this, we are proud uh, to have amongst us Dr. Jyoti Patil, madam, a very dynamic personality in education fraternity who has created an iconic space with the sheer hard work and dedication. Uh, Stalwarts need no introduction. Still, it's my humble duty to give a formal introduction of Dr. Jyoti Patil, madam. Dr. Jyoti Patil is a principal at Renuka College, Nagpur. Madam has 
teaching <laughs> madam don't don't waste time uh, people uh, no uh, more. i'll just give <laughs> okay so with immense pride and great respect i call upon dr jyoti patel madam to address the concluding remarks of this 8 day mega event um sakure madam yes yeah. Uh, you just convey the message to chakravarti madam that after jyoti patel madam's address uh, she will be uh, taking up this session okay i uh, okay. Uh, i think uh, thank you okay should i speak should i speak even perhaps pranodi chakravarti madam is actually through uh, through it should i speak or should i wait for chakravarti madam to continue uh, uh, i think she has okay. unmuted herself but uh, okay. i'm not busy okay. now okay thank you minakshi Good and pleasant evening to all the virtual friends. Uh, I'll begin my speech with the famous lines of John Milton uh, in his poem on Shakespeare. What needs my Shakespeare for his honored bones? The labor of an age in piled stones. Thou, in our wonder and astonishment, astonishment, hast built thyself a lifelong monument. Honorable Dr. Pranoti Chakravarti, uh, President of Shakespearean Society of Central India, uh, and Click. Uh, center for literary interaction and cre creativity who has always been a source of inspiration and motivation for all literary enthusiasts like us her charismatic presence presence exude the energy and enthusiasm to charge us to pursue what she has dreamt for some few lines for you madam uh, you have never been hesitant in sharing your wisdom you have always allowed us to operate with freedom you have never been reluctant in giving us authority you have let us make mistakes even if they are costly the you have believed in us even when we have been in doubt and you have shown us all what a great mentor is all about thank you madam for being there to bless us always uh, i can see a respected professor g a ganesham is also amongst us uh, who is a general secretary and founder i spell who generously agreed to collaborate with uh, Shakespearean Society of in Central India and CLIC in conducting this wonderful program. So welcome, sir. And uh, thanks a lot for, uh, for uh, giving permission for this wonderful treat and a kind of a course for, for the participants. It has been more than 400 years since William Shakespeare passed away. But the works of the famous actor and playwright, which have been uh, translated into more than 100 languages will live on forever. Our today's eminent speaker, Dr. Murli Krishnan, Joint Secretary, ISPL India, and a prolific professor, I should say, extend my, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Murli Krishnan for readily accepting our last minute re request to deliver a lecture on the cross cultural contours of the cellulite Shakespeare, who has examined. Uh, his film uh, and dramatic adaptations with equal ease and acumen. And what he has given, he has given a road, a vista, where we can treat upon and learn more about this film, uh, film studies on Shakespeare. This online uh, certificate course in Shakespeare study, studies was conducted in collaboration with ISL Vidarbha Forum. This Indian Society for the Promotion of English Language and Literature, popular, popularly known uh, by this acronym ISPEL, was founded by the like-minded uh, Fraternity of English on 5th September 2020. ISPEL is committed to provide a platform for the teaching fraternity to progress and perform and hone their teaching skills to match with the changing and challenging times by arranging seminars, conferences, symposia, and workshops. ISPEL is open to collaborating with higher edu education institutions, associations, societies, and different groups working in the field of education to reach the unreached. In this eight-day journey from 22nd July to 29th July through the unending reservoir of Shakespearean nectar in the form of this certificate course in Shakespearean studies, specially designed for the lovers and enthusiasts of Shakespeare, covering almost all important aspects of his 37 wonderful plays and 154 sonnets, we touched upon the villains of Shakespeare at the inaugural session on 22nd July, where Dr. Supanta Bhattacharya mesmerized us with his signature style, delineating all the mo most famous murdering usurpers, power-hungry backstabbers, uh, and scheming sinners. He focuses on Tamora from Titus Andronicus and 
uh, Angelo from Mizer from for Mizer, Richard the Third, Gonrail, and Regan from King Lear, Lady Macbeth, uh, Claudius from Hamlet, and Iago from Othello. As Shakespeare himself says, "Hell is empty, and all the devils are here." And on the second day, on twenty third July, Doctor Dipti Jain Thakre dealt in depth. About the role of uh, women characters in Shakespeare's Shakespeare's tragedy, wherein she focused focused on Lady Macbeth in Macbeth, Desdemona in Othello, Ophelia and Gertrude in Hamlet, Cordelia in King Lear, and also Viola and Olivia to some extent in in Twelfth Night. And Shakespeare says, "The lady doth protest too much, methinks. Don't call him chauvinist for not giving." Uh, them the prominent roles in his tragedies. On the day third, uh, on twenty fourth July, Dr. Sudesh Bosle del dealt into the historical plays of Shakespeare with reference to Henry the Fourth and Henry the Fifth. Shakespeare has written ten historical plays, including King John, Richard the Second, Richard the Third, Henry the Fifth, Henry the Fourth in two parts, Henry the uh, Sixth in three parts, and Henry Eighth and Edward the Third. Okay, so just as Shakespeare's comedy have some dark themes and tragedy, tragic situations, while the tragedies have some high comic moments, this Shakespearean tragedies contain comedy, tragedy, mixture, everything in between, and that covers the history, English history from 12th to 16th century. And on the fourth day, on 25th July, Dr. Sujata Chakravarti talked at length about Shakespearean tragedy with reference to one of the one of his four famous tragedies, Hamlet. While talking in general about Othello, King Lear, and Macbeth, with all the common characteristics of these tragedies, looking at Shakespearean tragedies, tragic plays, a combination of some nine elements make the plot: a tragic hero, good against evil, hamartia, tragic waste, conflict. The supernatural element, catharsis, lack of poetic justice, and parapeta—that uh, is, dramatic reversal of circumstances—and anagnorosis, that is, the change from ignorance to knowledge. Uh, it is done wonderfully well by Dr. Sujata Chakravarti. On the fifth day, that is, 26 July, Dr. Subhashri Mukherjee delivered her talk on commonalities of uh, comedies and insight into major Shakespearean comedies. Covering all the common traits of Shakespearean comedy in lucid and impressive manner, the famous comedies she covered were all were all is well that ends well, as you like it, the comedy of errors, lost labors lost, measure for measure, the merchant of Venice, the merry wives of Windsor, and a midsummer night's dream. Uh, all these ca characteristics, such as mistaken identity, battle of sexes, and jumping to conclusions. Uh, are what set the comic tone of these plays, and Shakespeare says these violent delights have violent ends. So should we call marriages as vo violent violent ends? Okay. On the sixth day, on twenty seventh July, Doctor Shanur Mirza dealt with Shakespearean characters and their relevance to the present times with an amazing parallels with today's life. Shakespeare is still relevant today for many reasons. Uh, some important life lessons taught by Shakespeare are. Give me, give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Uh, all that glitters is not gold. Love all, trust a few. Do wrong to none. Uneasy lies the head there that wears that wears a crown. And I think Shakespeare is more relevant today. On the seventh day, uh, on twenty eighth July, Doctor Manjushri Sar Sar Deshpande touched upon entirely different facet of Shakespeare. That is Shakespeare as a love poet. She explained his sonnets with minute detail by comparing his sonnets with Elizabeth's sonnets wonderfully. When she expressed her an intense feeling, "How do I love thee? Let me count the ways." Okay, I love thee to the depth and breadth and height. And she talked also in detail about Petrarchian and Spenserian sonnets, also. And today, that is on eighth day, at the last day of the course, apart from Dr. Mulde Krishnan's. A wonderful lecture. We had a virtual visit to Stratford upon Avon, uh, the birthplace of Shakespeare and the Globe Theatre. So we were transported to those places uh, thanks to Dr. Usha Sakure, the ringmaster of this whole show, the coordinator of this certificate course, secretary of Shakespearean Society of India, and Click as well. In addition to event coordinator of ISPL Vidarbha Forum. Thankfulness has no hold here. But commitment says it all.
I will fail in my duty if I don't mention the names of all the Toastmasters. I mean the moderators who conducted the session smoothly and effectively. They were Dr. Minakshi Vasnik, Dr. Humaira Kureshi, Dr. Dipti Jain Thakre, Dr. Sujata Chakravarti. Some of them have different roles also. And I hope the attendees would have certainly been benefited from this course. We have not kept an assessment or exam, but question answer sessions were kept to measure their interest in the field. And the more you ask, the more you learn, it is said. T.S. Eliot has rightly said, we can say of Shakespeare that never has Shakespeare that never has a man turned so little knowledge to such great account. And yes, true. Shakespeare has also said, brevity is the soul of wit. So therefore, I will be brief. Yes, I conclude here. Thank you. Thank you all. Listen to me. Thank you. Yes, over to Minachi. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jyoti Patil, madam, for summing up so brilliantly the eight days intellectual workout of this program. No doubt you are always a versatile speaker, ma'am. You have very meticulously revealed the true image and hard work behind the quality execution of this program through your influential remarks. Thank you very much, ma'am, once again. Uh, may I now request uh, Dr. Pranuti Chakravarti, madam, uh, to, to enlighten and give a brief insight yeah, we are eager to listen to you, ma'am. Yes. Uh, thank you, Minakshi. I hope I'm audible now. Can you hear yes. me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, uh, give me, uh, dear participants of CLIC and Shakespeare Society of Central India, the members, our members and our collaborators, I spell, and among them is Dr. Ghansham and uh, Dr. Jyoti Patil. Thank you, Jyoti, for your very kind words to me, for me. I am really moved. But then it is expected uh, that I should uh, encourage all of my uh, uh, people who are members of Click and Shakespeare Society and I have only done my role, nothing else. But anyway, thank you for your kind words. It gives me great pleasure to address you all today in my office as the chairperson of this meet. This is a virtual national level workshop and it's really the fulfillment of a dream. A dream that was dreamt in 2002, when we visited Calcutta, or in uh, our click team visited Calcutta, Kolkata now, and we uh, met the office bearers there, and they made all arrangements for our stay at Kolkata at very nominal rates. And then we would see this Midsummer Night's Dream performed in Loreto College, Kolkata. It was a real, it was a lovely experience, in fact, and we enjoyed every, every bit of it. We were then asked by them to become their members, but we had second thoughts. We thought that what would our students in Viderva gain by our uh, becoming their members? So we thought of floating a new society here, I'm call, calling it the Shakespeare Society of Central India. And I'm glad to say that over these 20 years, we have had a task to perform, and we have performed it, I feel, quite well. We have held the certificate course in many colleges in Nagpur, and during this journey, we have developed our own members to become resource persons. To act as resource persons for a course. You know, when I had asked some of the prominent members of Nagpur to come and speak uh, at our uh, inauguration function, so scared they said, speak on Shakespeare. No, thank you. We are, I don't think we can do that. 
you ask us to do anything else, we'll do. We can help you and all that. But we can't come and speak on Shakespeare. They were mortally scared of this. But anyway, our own teachers, our own members have come out bravely, and uh, they have really done a great job. As Einstein had once said, today try not to become a man of success, but rather become a man of value. Our aim has always been to enhance individual talent. Our students should be well-read and cultured individuals. Our mother society clique, that is the Center for Literary Interaction and Creativity, was given a new dimension by advocate John Lobo, who said, click stands for come, let us imbibe culture. When a cultured person speaks, his conversation is never shallow. His conversation shows his reading. Francis Bacon had said in his essay, Reading, reading make it a full man. We hope after attending these lectures, you would turn to read to reading of Shakespeare's sonnets, his tragedies and comedies, and his history plays. Yes, as Dr. Muri Dharan said, that it is not possible to educate everyone in eight days, but our view was to make them aware, make them want to read more. As a student, one student had come to me and asked me to be his PhD guy. So I asked him, what do you wish to work on? And he said, the novels of Shakespeare. I was shocked. But Shakespeare never wrote any novels. So don't make this mistake. Dear friends, then nowadays people seem to have given up reading, but that you, but your own cell phone, cell phone can connect you to scholars who can enhance your horizon of knowledge is a new perspective today. So through your cell phone, you have been able to attend this virtual meet and really connect with Shakespeare scholars. As Mahatma Gandhi had earlier said, be the change you wish to see in the world, unquote. So if you want to see a change in the world, you be the change. And that was my belief, that our resource persons would contribute their might and change the perspective about Shakespeare. He's not someone to be afraid of. And as one uh, professor, Anil Matthew of Hislop College had said, don't frighten people. They should enjoy Shakespeare. The discussions held after each lecture, the question answer sessions were really a fruitful experience. It helped to clear many doubts and doubts and difficulties, and added to the capacity of understanding the problems that had been generated. Each session, eight sessions were held, and Jyoti Patil has given you already a very detailed uh, analysis of all the description of all the topics that were taken up. Uh, but I would like to thank each speaker and they need to be congratulated for their in-depth analysis of the various sides of the topics assigned to them. Thank you, Dr. Shupanto, Dr. Manjushri, Dr. Dipti, Dr. Shuboshri, Dr. Sujata, Dr. Sudesh, and Dr. Murli Krishnan for your able talks today. Mr. Krishnan's uh, reference to the celluloid adaptations of Shakespeare again added 
a fresh dimension and would help students of film studies. Long back, the Latin poet Ovid had said, tea by delighting. And that is why in our earlier courses, we would show them actual uh, BBC presentation of Macbeth, Julius Caesar, Hamlet, and we would show them in the afternoon sessions. The morning sessions would have the lectures, but now that is difficult. Uh, so we have, but we compensated in a way by showing the Shakespeare's birthplace on Stratford on Avon. And I thank Dr. Takure for who showed us her pictures of her visit to Stratford on Avon. This will make Shakespeare, this has surely made Shakespeare come alive, but a living, in, not, not just a name, but a living personality who lived then and still lives in our consciousness. He is the swan of Avon and he actually went to London later and emerged at the Globe Theatre as an upcoming dramatist. The Globe Theatre, as Usha has already showed you, was placed outside the city limits because the Puritans, with their severe and straight-laced views in religion and morality, were especially hard on dramatic and theatre owners. I think Dr. Sakure has fulfilled a great need and passion by taking you to London and actually showing you the events, the pictures of Stratford, Shakespeare's birthplace, as well as the Globe Theatre. I will just give a small quote that I saw in Hitwad in, in their inspiration column some days back that was in the month of May. It says, be flexible enough to absorb blows. Be curious enough to explore new ways for moving forward. Be rigid enough to hold together skeptical energy. Be skeptical enough to avoid being let down dead and fast. Be tolerant enough to initiate and inspire genuine cooperation. Be dis discerning enough to create reasonable, valuable results. I think I will close with a small poetic tribute to Shakespeare that I had written earlier. Shakespeare, thou art a monument of human aspirations. Shakespeare, thou standest apart, a painter of human emotions, a sculptor of human thought, a dramatist of human conflicts, a poet of human dreams. Thy writings transcend all barriers of country, region, or school. Thou livest, though long dead, in our hearts supreme. With these, this poetic tribute, I conclude my talk today and hand over the mic to Dr. Minaski, who is an uh, ardent and very, very energetic person who has been with us right through the course. And thank you, Minaski, for all your efforts. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam, for your insightful address with your thought-provoking ideas. We are always in need of your strong-minded suggestions and guidance indeed, ma'am. Thank you very much once again. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks in today's validatory program of eight days national online certificate course on Shakespearean studies. I take this prestigious opportunity to express my deep sense of gratitude to the very resourceful personality, Dr. T. Murli Krishnan sir for bracing the occasion and for your scholarly inputs and Star Wars representation.
I extend my heartfelt thanks to our mentor and source of our inspiration, respected Dr. Pranoti Chakravarti Madam, who always acts in the interest of the group to lead and evolve through her result-oriented decision and establish a clear framework. Thank you very much, Madam, for your gracious presence as a chairperson in today's program. I express my deep sense of gratitude to Dr. Rusha Sakure, Madam, for her commendable presentation on the topic Stratford upon the Avon and the Globe Theatre. Also, my sincere thanks for your earnest objective to explore new dimensions to retain Shakespearean continuous legacy. Thank you very much, Madam. The concluding remark is the mirror of the program. Therefore, my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Jyoti Patel, Madam, for her commendable concluding remarks. Also, thank you, ma'am, for your continuous stronghold and gripping every session of eight days program very smartly to improve the quality of conducting this program from beginning till the end. I express my deep sense of gratitude to all our eminent resource person, Dr. Supanta Bhattacharji, sir, Dr. Deepti Jain Thakre, madam, Dr. Sudesh Bhote, Dr. Sujada Chakravarti, Dr. Subhashri Mukherjee, Dr. Shanur Mirza, Dr. Manjushri Sardesh Pandey, Dr. Usha Sakure, and Dr. T.R. Murli Krishnan, sir, for their uh, scholarly discourse in these eight successive days uh, for giving us a, a new vision to comprehend Shakespearean age with aesthetic pleasure. With immense exultation, I take this opportunity to express my deep sense of gratitude to the organizer of this program, Dr. Pranuti Chakravarti, Madam President, Shakespearean Society of Central India, Professor Dr. Ghanshyam Sir, Secretary I spell, Dr. Rusha Sakura, Madam Secretary, Shakespearean Society of Central India, and Dr. Jyoti Patel, Madam President, I spell for being the strong pillar behind this eight-day Shakespearean certificate course. My profound thanks to all the executive members of Shakespearean Society, Vidarbha Forum, and I spell for your resilient effort, constant motivation, and source of vigor to make this program successful. My sincere thanks to the technician, Mr. Ankush Bobre, for his constant technical support for the smooth functioning of this program. Had we failed to have such a wonderful, learned, and enthusiastic and dynamic participant, we seldom had achieved this knowledgeable momentum. So I extend my deep sense of gratitude to our esteemed participant for the continuous curiosity from first day of the program till the end of the eight-day certificate course. I anticipate retaining the fathomless affection and the unflinching support from all our dear participants subsequently in every walk of the life. A short announcement. All participants are requested to fill the feedback forms to record your positive responses and the certificates will be generated after filling up the feedback forms. So with the consent of uh, the chair and the organizing secretaries and all the organizing committees, uh, I hereby end this program. Yeah. And just to yeah. that, you know, since we yes. have Sam sir here amongst us, just few words from him. So request sure. him to speak uh, a few words. Yeah. Yeah. Please, ma'am. I request Ghansham, sir, if he's here, uh, mm -hmm. since I can see he's, he's yeah, there. Ma'am, already mm -hmm. everything is done. So there is no need for me to speak. And uh, it's not required also because, uh, as I think, everything is done and Thanksgiving has been given in such a wonderful way by uh, Meenakshi. So I don't think I deserve a mention at all here. And really, I'm speaking means it's not necessary uh, because already you have represented ISPEL. Only one thing what reminded me of uh, Dr. Pranati Chakravarti, ma'am, and uh, all the people, those who are associated with CLICK, including Usha Sakure, ma'am, fantastically, you have clicked the picture of Shakespeare. That's what CLICK is all about. And when you are clicking the picture of Shakespeare in all these eight days, every individual was trying to spell and that's why every I individual spelled. every i was spelling and every i was clicking so this spell and click they combined together and that's what the beauty of uh, this kind of a collaboration coordination and combination what dr pranoti ma'am was telling about read why to read we need to read to lead and when we lead then we must lead with the deed so these two things are very important, reading to lead and lead with the deed. So this lead, deed, they are the part and parcel of our lives. And Shakespeare has to be remembered in one particular way for human values. Even Nack talks about uh, 
inculcating human values among the stakeholders and also starting value added courses this particular certificate course is a value added course for all the people those who have been participating in these events so this has not only added value but it has given a wonderful relevance of the time of shakespeare with the present age every character every individual character is around us and probably every character is within us so when you find yourself when you introspect yourself all the characters all the tragedies comedies and everything is there inside us so every individual carries shakespeare and when he carries shakespeare then he becomes a dramatist he becomes a, a poet he becomes an actor so everything is within us so when we read all these things we do appreciate that we have read shakespeare but at the same time we have enacted shakespeare even on the streets also even in the gullies and mohallas also whatever that's happening if you just get into shakespeare's shakespearean dramas you will find every drama of shakespeare is there in the nookers every shakespearean drama is there in the society so in that way we need to make shakespeare to come just out of the four walls of uh, our classrooms and must reach beyond the borders and boundaries and that's what click has done in collaboration with i spell so a uh, great regard i cannot say thank you to you but uh, i express my profound gratitude to click uh, dr pranuti ma'am dr usha sakure ma'am including uh, dr jyoti patil and even minakshi whom i have seen right from the beginning till end and this is what uh, we call a kind of a uh, unity which uh, brings integrity in ourselves so a big thank you to all of you thank you very much sir for your kind uh, and encouraging words so thank you everyone uh, for such a wonderful uh, participation so stay safe and a pleasant uh, goodbye to all of you so thank you thank you sir